Hey Media Studies, this is Miss Taylor and today we are talking about chapter 40. Uh, it is the first chapter in your unit four for audience and identity. Um, got your notes here on the right hand side of the screen and the chapter from the textbooks on the left hand side of the screen um, just so that we can see both as I kind of walk you through what you can expect to read from chapter 40. Um, so we talk about audiences, or this unit, we're gonna be talking about audiences and we're gonna talk about audience-based research practices. Um, and this kind of came about as a idea of media studies because when you have media and you have media text, you also have an audience. Um, and what happened was the producers of media text wanted a way to make sure that their messages were getting out there, that they were being received, but they also wanted feedback about what people were saying once they received the messages. Um, and so audience studies came out. Now, when we talk about audience studies, there's three different um, topics that we have to consider, ideas, uh, groupings of audiences and the way audiences are categorized. The first one is a receiver. Now, receivers are merely just recipients. They are people on the receiving end of the media text. Um, it stops there. So when you're going through your project, make sure that you're using the appropriate lingo. Um, receivers are anyone and everyone who come in contact with the message. Um, but once they start to interact with that message, they go into a higher category of audience. So a receiver is just somebody who comes across your media text. Now, the audience of your media text are the people who respond to that media. Um, when we think audience, I want you to think target audience, okay? So the people who the message was actually in intended for and the people who respond or react to the media text. Um, and then you have the user. Now, the user is just a step above the audience, and you have to be really careful here again because um, the slight difference is that a user will actually use the media text um, to further interact with the world around them, okay? So we have an audience of a film, it's a target audience. Let's say it's a cartoon on TV. Um, the receivers of the cartoon on TV are anybody who is scrolling through the TV channels and they come across that particular channel, that particular show. Now, the audience of that particular show, when they're scrolling through TV, they'll stop, they'll sit, and they'll watch it. But then you have the user. Now, the user is going to be the person who is scrolling through the TV, stumbles across their channel with their cartoon on it. Not only will they sit and watch that cartoon, but they will take that cartoon, take the ideas from that cartoon, and use it to further interact with the world around them. Um, this can be something as simple as like, so let's say we're watching SpongeBob, um, memes on the internet. When a person is scrolling through, they sit down on, on TV, SpongeBob comes on. If they're just going to watch the SpongeBob show and then turn TV back off, that's it. They were an audience, they're done. Now, the person who watches the SpongeBob show sees something funny or hilarious or totally relatable and then turns that into a meme or a joke, or maybe it's a viral trend about something based on that TV show, you are now a user, okay? So you've got three different types of audiences, three different categories of audience. When you're doing your project for Unit 4, you've selected your media text. I want you to tell me who are the receivers, who is the audience, and how does a person become a user? What exactly would they do that would classify them as a user of that media text? Okay, so that's how you connect this chapter, chapter 40, to your project. Tell me the difference between a, re a receiver, an audience, and a user for your media text. Um, so now the rest of the chapter is going to go into and talking about breaking down those receivers, audiences, and users. Um, I just want to highlight a few points from your lecture notes on the right hand side. Um, receivers are often easily identified as being um, 
in smaller groups of communication. It can be in larger groups of communication, um, but the receiver is just the person who comes in contact with the message, okay? Um, receivers, when they do receive the message, they can either decode it in a dominant, negotiated, or oppositional manner. Um, so I'm gonna highlight these words. And basically what this means is, once the receiver comes in contact with the message, how much he or she agrees with the message and accepts it will tell you how much they decoded it, okay? Um, Stuart Hall calls this the polysemy of messages, um, meaning that any message that is put out into the world, any media text that we put out into the world, it has multiple meanings. It can be interpreted in multiple ways. And we studied a lot of this in unit one and two when we talked about culture, identity, um, and we talked about media text in general. And then we go back a little bit in this text, in this particular chapter, and we talk about culture. Um, the big thing with culture, identity, and representation, what we talked about in units one and two, is that everyone's culture is different, everyone's background is different, and we can't assume that everyone is going to communicate and understand the same things in the same way. Um, there is no universal sign or symbol um, to get a message across. And to assume that there is one um, is a little bit far reaching. And then the last thing I wanna call to your attention is the bottom part here. Um, throughout history, the changes that have occurred in terms of the audience, who the audience is and what the audience does. Um, a lot of what has happened in our world in general, this has happened to audiences, this has happened to our media text. Um, we can see that there used to be a very limited scope to these ideas. Things happened one way, one way only, and that was kind of the end of things. Um, but again, thanks to technology, as we've seen in our studies throughout the semester, um, technology gave way to a lot of different ways to accomplish a goal, um, to put out a media text, to receive a media text. Um, and we say, we term this as it went from homogeneous to heterogeneous. Um, and again, this goes back when we were talking about the invention of like the telegraph, the fact that technology and the creation of technology and the advancement of technology has broken down space and time barriers. Um, because now with our audiences, those audiences don't have to be in the same space. They don't have to be there at the same time. Um, perfect example, distance learning. Somebody may be watching this video um, at five o'clock on Wednesday. Somebody else may not watch this video until 10 o'clock on Friday morning. Uh, and that's completely fine um, because technology has allowed us to have this message accessible and readily available at any time for any audience when it best suits their needs. Um, and so that's it. Uh, like I said, make sure that this is the part you focus on for incorporating the chapter and the text into your project. Um, oh, and then I have another one for you. So I'll add it to the discussion questions here. Um, obviously, you have your key terms right here on the left you need to um, define, and then your discussion questions. Why has the internet changed the concept of audiences? Find examples from the text that support your theory. I'm actually gonna put both of those together. And I'm gonna type this up real quick. All right, so your question two is in there now. Um, for your project, identify and explain who are the receivers, users, and audiences. Be sure that you are specific in identifying and explaining how um, those categories are made up and who fits in them. And then also for your project, analyze the type of audience your media text has. Um, and by type of audience your media text has, um, this is the question that I posed to a lot of you when you first gave me your project is, um, 
who is that audience? What is that audience made up of? You know, demographics, socioeconomic standing, um, cultural background, heritage. Um, does it focus on people from a specific region, um, type of town, um, those things? So what type of audience? Give me the background information. Give me the demographic breakdown of your audience for your media text. Explain how you know what the audience is, provide specific details about the audience, who are they, and why are they the audience? Does the producer have a particular goal in mind that they are trying to accomplish? Um, is there some kind of propaganda or agenda here that they are trying to push? Whatever the case may be. All right, um, guys, just as a reminder, I've heard from two, I think maybe three people um, about your project topics or ideas, um, make sure you get those into me by tomorrow. Hopefully this first chapter lecture um, helps you get an idea so you can decide. Remember, um, media texts are anything from um, songs, uh, albums, TV shows, movies, books, YouTube influencers, vlogs, um, newspapers, uh, news channels, news reports, um, and you can hear more about your Unit 4 project if you click on this video lecture here. I go into explaining the project itself and the rubric and how you'll be graded. All right, so let me know if you've got questions. Um, make sure you get chapter 40 completed and we will do chapter 41 and 42 on Friday. Talk to you guys again soon.